Hi, welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea Stratton from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are here. This episode is for Monday, December 13th. We are super excited about today's episode because our good friend and fellow Moda designer, Corey Yoder, is our special guest for the day. Yay! (laughs) Thank you, Billy. We we have missed her so much. Uh, you'll find that w- when you listen to this episode that we, we just taped a couple of weeks ago, actually, uh, we just had so much fun reconnecting with her and talking. It had been a couple of years, and she's just so sweet. We all uh, debuted our first collections with Moda at the same market in Minneapolis, and we just know you're going to enjoy this episode. Just before that, though, I have a couple of her bundles on the table, Cozy Up, which is in stores now, and Beautiful Day, which will be arriving any time now. Yeah, December-ish, January-ish, so soon. Yeah. And then also just quickly before Chelsea shares her quilts, Fat Quarter Shop sent us the Rose in Bloom Block of the Month book by our friend Vanessa Gertzen, so we wanted to share that, and it's a really fun block of the month with a really beautiful layout and so we will link yeah. this as well and i'll just it turned out so beautiful yeah i'll just let chelsea talk about her quilts <laughs> okay so i have two quilts to share with you today and the quilt on the wall is called morning walk you may have seen this one uh before it hasn't been on the wall yet though it's fat eighth friendly and a log cabin block is one of my very favorite blocks And this is just kind of a fun twist on it. So this was made in our Seashore Drive collection that will ship probably January, February-ish soon. So really love this one and used our tone-on-tone background. So a lot of fun there. And then the quilt on the table I'm extra excited about. I wanted to share it before I send it off to the quilter. Uh, and, and actually, if it's quilted by now, we'll pop oh, up a picture. Yes, we're we will. taping this a yeah, little bit early. A little bit early, so it might be quilted. Yeah. But on the table, I just had to bring the top. <laughs> this is my newest pattern, Little Town. And I made this using Folk Tale by Vanessa Gertzen of Lella Boutique. And it's cute cottage houses and trees with Christmas stars. And I have just adored this pattern. And actually, I am going, you might be seeing this on social media now, but uh, I actually have Beautiful Day Fabric by Corey, so I can show a version in a wall hanging or a bench pillow. So be on the lookout for that. It might, I might be sharing those things uh, right now, actually. So, (laughs) So I am doing more things with it, but the pattern just turned out beautiful. It's fat eighth friendly. And so cute. I can't yeah. wait to make it. It's perfect. It's kind of like the perfect fall to Christmas transition quilt. Yeah. So you could do both. Uh, but yeah, so those are my two quilts and we'll have those, uh, the information linked to these. Uh, so yeah. And I'm just so excited. I just have to, you know, expound on what mom said about Corey. We're very excited to have her with us today in this interview and even, just just learning about her, even things I didn't know. And so we're so excited and hope that you enjoy it. Yep. So we'll just jump right, right to the interview now. Okay, so we are here, everyone, with Corey Yoder. Corey Yoder. <laughs> Hello, Corey. <laughs> Hello, it's so good to be here, you guys. I'm so excited to chat with you today. <laughs> we have been looking forward to this for so long. I feel like we first brought up your name like a year ago. And it oh was, really, we did. Yeah. We were like, we got to have Corey on. Uh, like, I'm yeah. so excited. It's going to be so fun to catch up. I feel like we have so many things to talk about because we haven't had a good chat in so long. <laughs> yeah. So it's been two years since we saw you, right? Two years. Uh, oh yeah that sounds right when you say that number it sounds even longer than I think it has been (laughs) yeah but yeah it's been so long yeah Yeah. so Houston 2019 would have been yeah oh so sad (laughs) yeah well hopefully Salt Lake Market will be a go and 
I know. And that's such a nice market, too. I really enjoyed that one the last time we were there. That yes. was so good. Yeah. I was very pregnant at that last time. Oh, that's year. right. Oh, <laughs> right. That makes so it seem. You said that. I wouldn't have even thought about that. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. So it's been five years. Finn just turned five years crazy. old. So, yeah. No kidding. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, how exciting. That was so fun. So yeah. fun. <laughs> I, I actually. Uh, I, I reserve my hotel room, so I'm being optimistic that it's going to be a go, you know? <laughs> oh, I hope so. Yeah. That's positive thinking. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, and there's such easy access to food and shopping there, too. I, like, I know. I like that part it of was, it. Yeah, it's such a nice, and it's so clean, and yeah. Um, like, Ryan, my husband, was with me when we went, and we used the public transportation, which we had never been there before, so you never know how that's going to go. But that was really nice, too. And it was just so easy to get around. Yeah. We had such a nice time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we are going to just ask you to tell all of our listeners, and I, I know that many of them, well, all of them know who you are, but <laughs> many of them might not have heard all of your kind of background into where you are today and we're just super excited for you to share your your journey okay. with everyone awesome well whenever anyone asks me like how I got started into quilting I always tell them it was kind of a meandering route to get to what I'm doing today <laughs> and it wasn't anything that I necessarily set out to do it was just little steps along the way that sort of led their way here which is kind of fun it makes it feel so like it was easy for me and it just kind of happened, which is a fun way to to come into this world because it's such a fun spot to be. But um like how far back do you want me to go? Wow, I don't I would learn yeah. it no, <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe not that far. <laughs> yeah, maybe like because uh, I've kind of heard a little bit before, like maybe like when your your girls were in school full time. Was that kind of okay. when Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> so like I would have started well, I grew up in a quilting family, but I didn't start quilting until after I got married. My husband and I got married in 97. And so it was after that that I started like quilting and sewing, but it was just as a hobby. And then um, I, when my oldest daughter was born, she was born in 2005, I started doing like applique kids clothes because I started making things for her. And then people wanted me to make things for their kids so it kind of turned into its own little business and so I did that for a few years um if anyone has heard the name little miss shabby that's sometimes associated with my name that was my applique kids clothing business name was little miss shabby so oh. um my first fabric line I was still using that same name because that was the name of my blog when I started blogging I used little miss shabby.com blogspot.com and so that name stuck for a little bit um but when I started designing fabric I switched that over to coriander quilts then pretty quickly so anyhow that was um okay so I got to backtrack a little bit that's, so no, that's good to know I didn't know I because I knew like the little Miss Shabby I didn't know what that came from yeah. so that's yeah. that's interesting yeah yeah I did that for a few years and then um my youngest daughter was born in 2008 and when she was born I stopped doing the clothing altogether because I did it a lot like it was pretty much a full-time job that I was making clothing and selling clothing and then it just got to be more than what I wanted to do I really liked um like designing like coming up with the designs and making the things the first time but then I would have you know a bunch of people that wanted to buy that design so then I'd have to make that same thing a lot of times and so that part I didn't care for as much but I really liked the creative part and so um I started doing more quilty things when she was born and started dabbling like in block design because I was in a bunch of quilting bees and so I started doing like quilt block design here and there and then it just kind of led into quilt design um, and then that led into I kind of approached things if I thought it was going to be fun I would give it a whirl so I thought well it would be fun to um do something for Moda Bake Shop. So I did that. And then that like led to magazines. I started doing designs for magazines, quilt patterns for magazines, and then um, collaboration books um, mm -hmm. where you would have just like one design in a book with a bunch of different people. Um, and then a book of my own was kind of the next thing. And then that led into 
fabric design. So kind of meandering, but um, I hadn't ever planned to do fabric design. It was when Eleni, my youngest daughter, was starting kindergarten. And I have a group of friends that um, we were together and a bunch of us had our youngest starting school in the fall. And so we were kind of thinking about what we were going to want to do. I had been a stay-at-home mom with my girls and was just kind of doing these things on the side just to be creative and have, you know, you're at home with your kids all day and you want something that's a little bit creative. And so that's, um, you know, kind of why I was doing the the quilting and and, and designing and those sorts of things. And then um, I had always thought I would just go back to work once my kids were both in school full time. And so that was happening, but I started thinking about the reasons I liked staying at home with the kids. Like you could be home, I could be home for six days or, you know, spring break and Christmas break and summers. And then when I was thinking about um, going back to work full time, those things were going to be harder for me to do. And so anyhow, I was talking to my friends about this and they, um, I was throwing out some different ideas. And one of the things I happened to mention was fabric design. It was kind of always, not always, but at that point in time was kind of in the back of my head as something to do that I could do that I could still work from home and it would, the schedule would be so nice. And this was a group of friends that's not a quilting group of friends. And so when I said fabric design and I started saying the pros of fabric design, one of them said, well, you should just do that. (laughs) <laughs> and she made it sound <laughs> she made it sound so easy, like, okay, like the pros outweigh the cons, let's just give this a whirl. So I went home after having that meal with them <clears throat> and started trying to figure out how to go about fabric design. And um I had worked with fabric companies at this point because I did a lot of um design work for different fabric companies for their new fabric lines that were coming out and and then they would take my designs and like do a free pattern or yeah like okay. a free pattern or they would use it to promote their fabric lines that would be coming out at market and so um I knew very much what needed to go into a collection but I had never tried to put one together on my own so um and I was sketchy like I mean not sketchy like that but sketchy like like drawing and all so right. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> from doing the applique and drawing up all of those designs so I like sketching and drawing and and those sorts of things. And um, I had done like embroidery designs and, and things like that. So I do like drawing. And so I just started researching. I feel like you can find everything online that you need to know about how to do anything. And so I started trying to figure out how to make fabric line and um, ended up using a free program called Inkscape. I don't, do you guys know Inkscape? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was it's like a free, I don't even know if it's still available or not. I'm not sure. But at that time, it was a free program, kind of like Adobe Illustrator, but free. Since I didn't know how fabric design was going to go, I thought, well, I'm just going to, I don't want to invest a lot of money on something I don't know if it's going to work out. So I um, downloaded that program and started sketching. And then I would, I draw my little sketches up and then I can take it into the program and much like Illustrator, you can resize and rotate and color and everything within that program. Figured out how to make repeats because that was something that I didn't know how to do and um, just started putting together a fabric collection. And since I had worked with so many different fabric companies, I knew that I wanted to work with Moda. I always really enjoyed working with them. And so once I had, um, I also researched to see like how many different fabrics are in a collection, how many different colors are in a collection, um, just by looking at collections that Moda put out. So I would kind of know, you know, what I wanted to turn in when it came time to turn in the collection. And so I just put it together and I emailed it. Once I had it together, I did a full 40 piece collection um, with the nine different colors. And I think I did nine colors, nine prints, something like that. Um, and then I just emailed it into Moda. And I honestly don't remember what email I used to send it into. I don't know if I sent it right into where it was supposed to go. or uh-huh. if I, just, I, I don't even remember. But I just emailed it in. And I heard back. Um, it was about two weeks later. I heard back. And they said, we, we love this collection. We like what you bring to the table. Welcome to Moda. And that was oh, my goodness. 14. I know. And it's just. I mean, and we've just kept on going from from there, and it's been so fun. And I've just learned what I needed to learn 
yeah. as they go. And it's, ah, they're a wonderful company to work with and I enjoy it. And it's so perfect for our family. I can be here with the kids and when they need me home, I'm right here. And it's been such a blessing for our family to be able to, to have this career that had just worked so well. Oh, yeah. So I just wanted to interject. I, oh, so so about that time, you know, Chelsea and I were also working on our first uh, collection. Yeah. And I remember yeah. you putting some hints out on social media. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I wonder if Corey <laughs> is going to be a new dis- Moda designer. Like, but I didn't, I guess I should have just emailed you because we kind of knew each other through our blogs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's so funny that you bring up because I had the same thought in my head because I feel like our our path to fabric design is kind of similar. We sort of come from the same background and we're probably involved in the quilting world about the same amount of time, I want to say, before we actually started designing fabric. Right. Um just kind of like a similar a similar path. And I remember thinking the same thing. I thought, oh, Sherry, now, how come she's never thought about doing fabric design? <laughs> and it was so funny that we were at that first quilt market together with our first collection. And we had chatted, like, probably on our blogs and via email prior to that first quilt market. And then it was so fun to get to meet you in person. And yeah. I don't know, we, I just have always felt we've had so much in common. Yeah. Yeah, I remember telling Chelsea, you're going to love Corey. Like, <laughs> she's so creative. And it's great because we just hit it off. So I feel like yeah. I I always know I'm going to have a, a great conversation and a great laugh with you all the time. Like, I feel like I we have a good yeah, sense so of humor. <laughs> Yeah, so fun. it was it was good that first market to, um, you know, have a, a little group of other people who were new at the same time and that we could I kind know. of pal around with. And uh, yeah, I agree. It's so that first market is intimidating to go so into and like, you're not sure how it's going to go and you're not sure if your plans for booth set up are going to work out and if you brought the right stuff. And yeah, I don't and know. So I've, many thoughts going into it. I feel like you were on the other side of the aisle from us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. yeah. I was the side of Joanna. Okay. Uh, which was intimidating by itself. <laughs> so fun. And um, Vanessa Gerson, I think, if I remember right, was on the other side of me, which yep. that was great too, because we had chatted before market because she was the person I. I don't know how we even got in touch, but I remember talking to her on the phone before market and I was like, now, how do you hang up quilts? What, what (laughs) hardware do I need to do this? And do I need to bring this? And I remember she was so helpful with, um, yeah, this is what you do and this is what, what is there. And it was so nice to have someone to talk to you like that too. Yeah. Yeah. And that was Minneapolis, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I have some pictures from Minneapolis. I, yeah. I'll have oh, Billy put one up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we do have some pictures we can yeah. add to this. We mix. have some fun. <laughs> Moda had that photo booth. And yeah. so oh, I, I have with the props and I have a bunch yes. of pictures. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Every now and then I'll see those pop up and I'm like, oh, boy. Here yeah. they are again. <laughs> I do have to say, though, uh, I really, really have always admired you because your family is so, so important to you. And I feel like I was still a really, really young mom. Uh, My kids were all very young. And so I always admired that about you, that your family was always uh, super important to you. So I love that you... You, you you saw it as like a huge blessing so that you could be home with your kids. And mm-hmm. uh, that's how I have felt because I was working uh, at the pharmacy before and I really just felt like I needed to be home. And so I really relate yeah. to that because it was important yeah. to me and that's important. So, uh, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's, it's worked out so well. And I'm sure you see that too, the flexibility and yeah. being able to be at home and if your kids need you you're right there. And having that flexibility has been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And even when I I homeschooled my kids last year, uh, because I know know you homeschool and Mm -hmm. it was so nice because I'm like, you want to know what? I work from home, so I'm able to still homeschool them. It feels so doable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, And it just Mm -hmm. made it so nice. And so Mm -hmm. I appreciated that. But yeah. So um, I was thinking maybe... You know, you might be able to talk just for a minute about uh, 
kind of like how you get it all done, what your work schedule is. And uh, I feel yeah. like, yeah, we've asked that. Uh, we asked Vanessa about that and Stacy, And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I think that's something that everybody wants to know, you know, how. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I have any profound wisdom on this. <laughs> I feel, Sherry, like you do so well with your productivity and scheduling and, um, I don't know that I do anything so very fancy. Like my schedule in the morning, I tend to do my computer work like right away in the morning. If I have orders to ship out or emails that I need to answer, I'll do that right away in the morning and get those things checked off. And then my schedule recently has been a little bit different. My girls, they do schooling here at home, but they do have to be in the school building for some of the week. So this year has been a little bit unusual. That's different for us that I'm driving them to and from school a little bit more. So that breaks up my day. Sometimes I'll drop them off and then come back and I can, if I haven't got all my orders done or something like that, I can work on that. I see sewing for like afternoons, which would be um, after they'd be back home. Um, and then in the evening, I try not to do too much of anything. So, and I've always done that. Um, my girls have been in public schools before. Right now they're at home, so it, it does look different. But um, I've always kind of saved evenings for our family. So maybe around four o'clock or so, maybe five, I might be closing up shop. And then the rest of the evening, you know, is cooking supper or if I need to finish up any laundry. That's the other nice thing. I, I find that if I'm doing a whole bunch of computer work and I need a little break, I can go empty the dishwasher or I can go throw in some laundry or, you know, kind of break it up with those household tasks that need to be done, which is really nice. So sometimes, you know, evening comes and I find that intermingled with, um, you know, quilting stuff, I've actually managed to check off quite a few things off of my you know, laundry, dishes, cleaning list as well. Which I know those things well. are still there. Like, right. you know, it's just like, there. oh, yeah. dang it, I got to go I do know. this. But <laughs> it's kind of nice, yeah, to take a break and refresh. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know, it's just having something a little bit different. It can feel like a break to do laundry if you've been sitting at your computer for a while. You're like, right. yes, yes. Laundry sounds like a nice change of pace. Yeah. So, it's so um, funny you bring that up because that yeah. was me yesterday. I was like, I have to sew 10 blocks. And Uh then I'm going to, and I did right after I went and folded laundry and then I went back and sewed 10 more blocks and it was nice. Yeah. It doesn't feel like such a big chunk of time. You've broken it up a little bit and you're still getting things done that need done. So, um, if I have a lot of things that I need to get done, I will, I do much better if I make myself a list and kind of prioritize. And actually for the first time, I think last week or the week before, I made myself a list and usually it's just this big ongoing list that I'll add to as more things come up and I'll just cross it off and add to it. And it's just sort of an ongoing thing, but I made a list and I said, I need, I want to have these, I don't remember how many things, three things done by 12 o'clock, like by noon. And I found that I was able to check those off probably faster than if I had just had them on my ongoing list, because sometimes I have a tendency to sort of, push things off. But when I had that actual, you need to have this done by noon, that really helps me stay on task with those things. So I might have to start doing that more often if I really want to check things off. um, Because I found that to be more helpful than I thought it might be, which is interesting. Yeah, I love that idea. I I love that. That helps me too, if I have like a a big three for the day and a big three for the week. Yeah. 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 So and some like this week, I my big three for the week all got done on Monday. So now I'm kind of like, oh, I feel a little bit better. That feels yeah. so good yeah. to be able to see that. Yeah. So, and I intermixed it with laundry too. So I'm just loving Yay. this. <laughs> yeah. We still fold laundry, guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So are your daughters interested in the quilting world, the business side of it, just the enjoyment <sighs> side of it? I don't know that they really are. My youngest daughter would be the one that I would say would maybe, I don't, she likes sewing things for herself. Like she might make herself like a little blanket or a little stuffed animal or something like that. She likes doing that, not following a pattern just to make something. And she will just use my sewing machine, you know, just help herself in my sewing room as she wants to. My oldest daughter doesn't ever do anything like that, but my oldest daughter is more artsy. She likes drawing and sketching and 
that sort of thing, which my youngest daughter doesn't do as much. So they both kind of have a little bit of an interest, but it's probably going to go a different direction probably. Yeah. But I don't know. I didn't do any of that when I was at home because my mom did it so much. And I was like, oh, this is just something like moms do or grandmas do. Yeah. And I didn't do it at home. And so just because they're not doing it now, like I don't write it off because I remember feeling how I felt when I lived at home. And so it'll be interesting to see what, what they end up doing. Yeah. yeah. That's so fun. Cause you know, I, I didn't really picture Chelsea doing this either. I, uh, yeah, at you know, all. <laughs> I, yeah, I tried to get her more interested in uh, quilting when she was in high school and she just, you know, she would just wasn't that interested in it. it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And now, well, you didn't tell me even at, I don't know what market it was when you were quilting, you weren't making, you, you hadn't pieced right at the first yeah. quilt market. Never, yeah. never. Yeah. yeah. I started right after that market, yeah. but I, but I wasn't even designing quilt patterns until probably right. like our fifth collection I okay. think so okay. yeah I uh-huh. felt like yeah that interest was sparked because I saw all of the creativity and the amazing yeah. quilts that designers were designing and well and I think it makes a really big difference I know when I was growing up the quilts that we have I live um well Sarah you know but the, yeah. the listeners wouldn't know that I live in an Amish community and so it's a very traditional quilting community that I live in and when I was growing up like a lot of the fabrics and prints would have been you know, browns and dark greens and burgundy and navy and those super teeny little florals and very traditional quilts. And it wasn't really until I started noticing that quilts can be can be brighter and you can use different palettes. And um, even if you're making a traditional quilt pattern, it's going to look completely different when it's done in different fabrics. And I think seeing those things and realizing that the quilting world is much more expansive than I thought that it was. Um, really drew me in it wasn't you know and so Chelsea for you maybe seeing oh okay so quilts don't have to look how I thought maybe they had to look to sort of open things up exactly yeah. totally spot yeah. on yeah mm-hmm. yeah when I was growing up I just felt like yeah I felt the same way I'm like oh this is something just moms and grandmas yeah. do and I just couldn't see me ever doing that and I, I mean, mom would be so excited about it. And I'd be like, oh, okay, we get it. <laughs> you, yeah, you sewed another bag. It's great. <laughs> uh, and now I'm like, oh my goodness, like my perspective has completely changed. Yeah. Like I actually enjoy mm-hmm. this, which is so funny. But... Right, right. It's so neat. <laughs> Mom's over there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excited about yeah. it. <laughs> no, it, it's been really fun to see. So yeah. that's been really mm-hmm. enjoyable. I have to... Uh, tell you too like I have loved sewing with your cozy up collection so much oh, so cute it, it, oh it's so perfect for fall I did uh ah. like a couple table runners and then I did your free pattern with the pumpkins I yeah. made a wall hanging version she did awesome. it's adorable yeah. Yeah. it's in that's the dining so room cute. I, that's so cute I'm sure that I saw that on your Instagram that was so fun it's been really fun seeing people's projects and it was really fun doing a fall line of fabric too that was the first like I've done ones that might have lent themselves well to fall but not yeah. one that was specifically fall themed which was fun yeah put yeah. my spin on what I would want to do for fall have you guys thought about doing fall we've talked about we've that. totally talked yeah. about it I would love to I'm yeah. hoping yeah. that yeah soon we can I'm trying to picture <laughs> what a fall line would look like from you guys that would I know because we tend to be yeah we t- I mean we're already kind of in the warmer category most of our fabrics are warm yeah but uh-huh. yeah I don't know yeah we've been I'm- talking about colors a lot lately mm-hmm. for that mm-hmm. so kind of going yeah. back and forth just conversational and I feel like right yeah. now like I'm finishing up I feel like we're always designing fabric lines. Like there's always a new deadline looming, right? And so we're working on you, one right mm-hmm. now. And I'm just like, well, yeah. what direction do you want to go? Because we could tweak the colors. And oh. It's always so fun to like, you're working on one and in the back of your head, you're like, hmm. I wonder what the next one should be. It, and yes. It's fun to think about. Mm-hmm. And you really do because also while you're designing a fabric line, you are also getting strike offs for another yeah. fabric line. So it's like yeah. always so strange as a, as a designer mm-hmm. that you're working ahead. Like you're now, ne- like you're yeah. always coming. Like someone asked me one time, and you probably get asked this, but they're like, well, don't you run out of ideas? And I'm like, well, no, because yeah. it just. 
it just grows. Like you want to yeah. do more things and you mm-hmm. want to do different things. And yeah, that's or kinda... different palettes you want to try out. Or... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. There's yeah. And then all, you're always working on like three different, there's always three different things going totally. on. Today. Right. Totally. Yeah. Point in time. Yeah. And, and someone will be like, oh, your new fabric collection. And my mind is totally on like the one I just designed. Like, and I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The new oh. fabric collection. Like, of course. I yeah. know. Oh, goodness. Oh, it's so fun. And you have your new collection that is coming out in the next couple months is Beautiful Day. And it yeah. is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Oh, I actually snagged awesome. some. I'm going to be making a wall hanging and a table runner soon. I have some too. Uh, Did you snag some too? (laughs) I did. Mom! Mom's over? Well, I thought I was the only one, but yeah, it's adorable. (laughs) Your panels are always so pretty, gorgeous. And I remember when you first started, your first panel was with a collection, Sunny Side Up, is that right? Yeah. And Uh it was so fun. And I remember thinking like, oh my goodness, like this is so cool. And but yeah, yeah, you're you're that, always doing fun things with your collections. Yeah, that panel in Sunny Side Up kind of made me think, okay, so we can do lots of fun different things with panels. And panels are kind of funny because some quilters are a little bit scared of panels or how to use panels. Yeah. Or sometimes like you hear as a quilter the word panel and you automatically think of some oh, I don't know, I'm probably gonna exaggerate, but like a wintery <laughs> snowman scene that's kind yes. of country with teddy bears right. or something like right. that. Yeah. And they're, they're just, <laughs> they don't have to be that way and you can use them in a lot of a lot of fun ways yeah um, and it's been fun to think of the different options or possibilities or things that maybe haven't been tried yet it's you know fun to try out different things yeah I was gonna say I what I love about a beautiful day is that you can use it as a Christmas group, but then you can also use it yeah. not as a Christmas group. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It's- yeah. It's got kind of a, a fun flavor to it because it'll work Christmas. And you can, especially if you just stick with the reds and greens, it can read really Christmassy. Yeah. Um, but if you take the reds and pinks, it's going to work really good into February for Valentine's Day quilts because right. those yeah. pinks and reds work really well for that. And when I designed this, I made sure that I designed lots of grays light grays and dark grays so you can leave out the color all together and just do some really pretty just gray quilts if you wanted to yes yeah yeah it's it's a really versatile collection yeah it's, and yeah. and this is the collection that is the charity uh quilt along is that right is it with yeah, fat quarter the shop fat quarter shop heartfelt mm-hmm. yeah it's really yeah. really pretty we were we talked with kimberly about that and it's so gorgeous and she said you actually designed the pattern for that is yeah. that right yeah that was really fun to design something for the charity quilt along i have participated um in the quilt along before and last year they used Springbrook for the yeah. for the quilt along, but they designed the quilt. So this year it was really fun that they asked if I wanted to design the quilt, and that was so fun. It's such a good cause to support. I really yeah. like being able to help out and do that. And yeah, I was excited that they asked about that because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and they have that little cross stitch. Did you guys see the little cross stitch pattern that goes with? Yeah, yes. they just so saw cute. a picture of it recently. Yeah, I think that's so adorable. Yeah, and we can pop up a picture of that. And yeah, we'll in pop up too. pictures. Yeah, and... yeah, that's yeah, been really so fun. Yeah, we did. Uh, I guess it was two years ago. They yeah, used summer used sweet. Your fabrics. I yeah. remember that. Right. Twenty twenty. <laughs> but they designed the quilt also. So yeah. we um we just filmed yeah, the videos like, and yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was so good. Yeah. So oh, it's it's been so much fun talking to you. I didn't know if there's anything you want to share with everybody. Any uh tips or tricks or anything else about what's coming up or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so beautiful day will be the newest thing coming out we've talked about that cozy up is still in stores if people are looking for fall fabrics if they still want to do some fall sewing um that would be in stores right now and then next year I think they're going to see three things. I have like a little fun little mini sort of thing that they'll see first coming up. So we can keep an eye out for that. I think that'll show in January and oh, the early spring. Oh, fun. And then <laughs> I have my next two collections done, which is crazy. Oh, my goodness. Usually, <laughs> usually I wouldn't. But um, I turned 
once the I turned the collection that was due in the summer in, and then we decided to hang on to that one, and they wanted another one for that deadline. So I quick did another one for that deadline. So okay, that's have, so smart though. That was like us a year so ago. Smart. We were like ahead, yeah. and now and I'm now like, like oh. yeah, this time of year, I feel like okay, so I don't because it's a December first deadline, right? Is that what it yeah. is? Yeah. So that's Chelsea's feeling it. Track. I know yeah. it's looming on yeah. me. I'm almost done yeah. with it, but <laughs> she's so like, mom, I would be frantically, yeah, trying to get that collection all put together to make sure everything is just looking great. And now I don't. I mean, it's, I feel like things are going smoothly right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> it helps to have that part of the cake done uh, yeah. while you're working on other things. And it's so nice because then you get strike offs earlier and everything's yes. decided beforehand. And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were yeah. with Sincerely Yours. We had that we turned in so really early. early. Yeah. And it oh, was so good. So Happy days and Sincerely right. Yours. We were super early. And now I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes you feel like, why don't I always do this? Yes. But then, like, sometimes you just get down to the designing and things just take longer. I don't know how you guys, how you design, Chelsea, when you're working on fabrics, but I know for me, like, I'll start working and sometimes it comes together really nicely and I'm happy with everything. And other times I could work on one print and get it, like, and it just never comes. And I just end up scrapping the whole thing. Yeah starting again yeah and sometimes and I don't, oh it's so frustrating because I'll work forever yeah, on that one print forever and then the I colors know, then just don't just work with doesn't. it mm -hmm. yeah uh oh, no yeah. I totally hear you and then other times like because somebody asked me and I'm like honestly I could design one in a couple days if it's the right if vibe it all comes together yeah it yeah. together fast yeah and I've had that doesn't. happen totally uh, but then yeah, other times sure. I'm like ah screaming at it like <laughs> not. yeah this is not good this is yeah. not good this will not work yeah I know and I don't know what makes the difference I don't know what it is that sometimes it just all flings into place and other times it's just like oh my goodness what is this horrible mess you are working on I know. right now seriously <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, this has been so much fun. I just totally don't want to stop talking because it's know. been so much fun. I feel like you're here with us. Well, I'm just, <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I miss seeing you guys. Oh. We're spoiled when we get to see each other twice a year at I Market. know. Yes. We really are. <laughs> yes. But it's good for our souls to be around each other. I yes. know. I yes. know. I know. It always like amps up the creativity and yes. you get excited hearing what other people are thinking about and working on. And yeah, it does. And I love that we're always like, oh, well, what are you like? We really do. We're just so like, we're all sitting there genuinely interested and happy for each yeah. other. And yeah. it's such a oh, nice, yeah. healthy environment. Like, and I, yeah, Absolutely. you feel that absence right now. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, and yeah. I love seeing what everyone's doing because, you know, half the time it's because I want to buy whatever yeah, <laughs> they're making. Like, I know. Yes, oh. I need that quilt pattern and I need that fat quarter bundle. Yeah. And I love this. And, oh, that was such a good idea. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. We You're just, excited. yeah. the ins We just feed off each other's inspiration and creativity. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It's just such a blessing. To, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we will have everything in the description below so everyone can get to all of your sites and all you know we'll put up a lot of pictures of the things we talked yeah. about today and we just really really appreciate you coming on the podcast and thank you so much this has been so much fun <laughs> it's be so fun to talk to you guys yes and hopefully we'll see each other in salt lake in april hopefully <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be so exciting yeah thank you Corey. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. I miss you. <laughs> okay, that's it for our conversation with Corey. We had a blast. And uh, how long did we stay on the phone with her after? Oh, that? my goodness. 30 it, minutes, maybe? Yeah, I, <laughs> we, <laughs> we miss her so much. And I feel yeah. like we just wanted to keep talking and talking and talking. And yeah. Just she's such an inspirational person to listen to and talk to. And just we're so grateful that she's such a close friend of ours and yeah. very inspired by her. We hope that you really enjoyed uh, this podcast, listening to her and her story. Yeah, yeah that's what I was. that's all I was going to say is well, behind the scenes is that after we cut the podcast interview, 
you guys stayed on the phone. <laughs> like I left the room, <laughs> you, left. you know, because we do these parts after the interview. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, I can do some something else while you guys catch <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <so. laughs> I know. I just couldn't get off the phone. We kind of had one of our like last day at market conversations with yeah. her. Just, uh, just really, really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, so I just want to let you know that our next episode will be the Monday after Christmas, Monday, yeah, Monday December, December 27th. 27th. Yeah. And we will be doing our annual goals episode for that, that podcast. <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. So. Thanks so much for stopping by. <laughs>